uh, find the locus uh, find the locus of z in the complex plane, plane z uh, complex sorry complex plane if z satisfies this condition so the condition is let's write the condition absolute value of uh, absolute value of z plus absolute value of z minus 1 is equal to 3 so when you are saying absolute value you are saying what's the difference of this complex number from the origin so if you take any complex number the distance from the origin is uh, using Pythagoras so let me go over that again so let me say this is a y-axis sorry this is your imaginary real axis and imaginary axis suppose if you have a complex number say z somewhere here which has got a plus b i as its coordinate or a plus b i is the complex number and here this is the distance we are talking about so this distance is called absolute value of z and that is using Pythagoras this is say a and this is b so I can say absolute value of z is square root of a squared plus b squared. a and b are numbers so here we are going to start like this let z let z is equal to x plus y i x plus y i so I can say this is absolute value of x plus y i y i plus absolute value of x plus y i take away 1 is equal to 3 now the absolute value of x plus y i is using Pythagoras it would be the square root of square root of x squared plus y squared x squared is the square of the real part y squared is the square of the imaginary part yeah the real part is x minus 1 so it will be the square root of x minus 1 squared and the imaginary part is y i of y so that will be plus y squared is equal to 3. okay so the next step i'm going to move this on the right hand to the right hand side or take away this from both sides so i can say square root of square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 3 take away square root of x minus 1 squared plus y squared so let's square both sides so if you square both sides I can write x squared plus y squared is equal to if you square this side I hope you can do the algebra yourself this would be 9 minus 6 times square root of x minus 1 squared plus y squared plus x minus 1 the whole squared plus y squared this is just a bit of algebra you don't need to get tired about it okay so let me change color just for the sake of changing color so this is x squared plus y squared is equal to 9 take away 6 times square root of this will remain as it is x minus 1 squared plus y squared and when you expand this you will have x squared take away 2x plus 1 plus y squared so let's see what will get cancelled from both sides. You can see an x squared and x squared can get cancelled. The y squared and the y squared gets cancelled. Okay, the next step is interesting. I'm going to move this to the other side. I'm going to t add this to both sides. So the next step would be 6 times square root of x minus 1 squared plus y squared. On the right hand side simplifies to you got a 9 here plus 1 is going to be 10 minus 2x 
okay so let me scroll up okay so I'm going to again square both sides so this will be 36 times x minus 1 squared plus y squared and if you square both sides if you square this I hope you can do the expansion yourself this will be 100 minus 40x plus 4x squared so this is basically 10x minus 2 times 10x minus 2 so let me again expand so this is 3 36 times expanding inside the bracket it is x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus y squared is equal to let me write this like this 4x squared minus uh, 40x plus 100 okay so let us scroll up so now let's expand this out further so this is 36x squared minus 72x plus 36 plus 36y squared is equal to 4x squared minus 40x plus 100 so let's take away say 4x squared from both sides 4x squared from both sides I'm going to add 40x to both sides okay and I'm going to take away 36 from both sides so I'll tell you why we are doing like this so let me change color so this becomes 32x squared minus 32x plus 36y squared is equal to 100 take away 36 is 64 okay so this is getting better so now I want to make this a complete square so I'm going to first factor out 32 from these two so if you factor out 32 you'll have x squared minus x I'll leave a gap here plus 36 x squared as it is plus is equal to 64 now completing the square if you want to make it a perfect square so what you do is you do the half of the coefficient of x which is 1 and then square it so that's going to be 1 half squared so which is a quarter and this is a perfect square so if you add if you write a quarter here and you have a 32 outside it in fact you have added 8 because 32 times a quarter is 8 uh, you got a 32 here so in fact I have written a quarter to make it a perfect square this is a perfect square of x minus half square and 32 times a quarter is 8 so if I am adding 8 to this side I should add 8 to this side so this becomes 32 times x minus half the whole squared plus 36 squared 30y squared 30y squared 30y squared my pen is not moving okay so this is 36y squared is equal to 72 okay so now to the next step is a bit difficult for you to understand if you don't know about ellipse I want a 1 here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the whole thing by 72 I'll tell you why later so I'm going to divide this by 72 divide this by 72 and divide this by 72 I'll just go over the rule of ellipse so 32 let me show this on a calculator so let me move it slightly to this side you can use a calculator uh, just to explain the next step go to run menu and you go 32 ABC 72 okay that is 4 ninth so 32 divided by 72 is 4 9 so I'm going to write the next step like this so this is 4 ninth of X minus half the whole squared 
plus y squared over 2 is equal to 1. This is same as x minus half, to explain ellipse I need to do the next step, divided by, multiplying by 4 ninth is same as dividing by 9 quarter, plus y squared over 2 is equal to 1. And finally, to write this in the standard form of an ellipse, I'm going to write this like x minus half the whole squared divided by, this is I can write as 3 over 2 or 1.5 squared plus y squared over square root of 2 squared is equal to 1. You don't need to do all these steps. This is good enough. If you reach this step, this you should know is an equation of an ellipse. But to draw an ellipse on a graphic calculator, we need to do this. So let me write the equation of an ellipse on a calculator. It goes like this. It is x minus h, the whole squared, over a squared, plus y minus b, sorry, y minus k, the whole squared, over b squared, is equal to 1. And that's why I divided the whole thing by 1. So now comparing this equation with this, I hope you understand your h is going to be half, your k is going to be 0, your a is going to be 1.5, or 3 over 2, and your b is going to be square root of 2. So get your calculators out, just to confirm. Okay, yeah, so go to conics, scroll down to conics, uh, scroll down to, hopefully, yeah. Okay, so scroll down to conics, sorry, ellipse. This is an ellipse. This is what I said, x minus h squared over a squared. Go to execute, and your a is 1.5. 1.5, execute, b is square root of 2. So shift, square root of 2, enter, a is your h, h is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and your execute, and your k is 0, and then draw it. And then if you want to see it as an ellipse, so go F2, zoom, and auto. So this is an ellipse. Okay, now it has got the center. So here you can see this is an ellipse. So you need to say this is an ellipse with center, with center one half zero, one half zero, and uh, it has a major radius of three, three, one point five, and a minor radius of root two. I'm not going into that. So just to show you that. So if you go to GSol, you can go to center. It's 0 0.50. So this is the center of the ellipse. It has got two focuses of four size. This is one zero is one focus, and if you, this is the other focus zero zero. Okay, and you can also go on the vertices. Uh, the vertex are the four corners. So this two zero uh, point five. So this is, if you click, you can get the four vertices, and then you can get the x-intercept and the y-intercept and so on. So basically, this is enough. And if you write this as an ellipse with a center one half zero, and you need to write some other facts, but I think this is enough to show that this is an ellipse.